Terry here, D-Lab, project of the day. A Marshall DSL 40C combo amp. Samp came to the shop with a complaint that the normal channel is low, semi-distorted, maybe some hum, versus the gain channel, which is working great. So I initially thought, well, it's a circuit board based amp, so it's probably bad connections. Let's see if D-Lab's right. Here's the bottom side of the Marshall, and you can see the big old circuit board in there, and it has a little daughter board, which is the DSP function, all right? Now, as you'll notice, the preamp tubes are all directly soldered in. And this is a prime place for bad connections to form. Now, if this were a hardwired amp, say like a Fender, and it came to the shop with noise and low gain, I would immediately check the tubes, because I don't have a circuit board to contend with. In this case, since circuit boards have a track record of bad connections, this is what I'm going to check first. All right? So let's give it the Mr. Obvious approach and see if anything rears its ugly head. All right, so let's sweep the board and look for anything obviously wrong. So I routinely grab these filter caps and make sure they're not loose because they are prone to bad connections. I'm going to inspect the tube socket pins where they come through the board very closely. So working our way down, here's another thing I don't like about these type of amps. Look at these pots. Sorry guys, these are cheap and if you accidentally hit them, these little tabs here will bend and you'll lose connection. They become intermittent. Terrible design. Sorry if Marshall guys. <laughs> Alright, so keep on going our way down here and now over here, this is the input jack. So we follow the cable and he comes up to the board right there. Now, what do we have right there? Do you see what I see? There's a broken screw on that mounting pad. And you may think, well, that's no big deal, right? Because you got all these other mounting pads. But if you look, these mounting pads don't have a ground trace going to them. They're isolated. Whereas this one has a pad and a trace exiting that. So you know what? That's a ground, and I bet you it's for the preamp section. So there could be our possible source of hum and low gain. Let's put a meter on it. All right, so take a look real close here, and you can see that the standoff, which is under the board, has a busted off screw in there, and there appears to be some corrosion. So my guess is, is this thing had some work on it at one time, somebody over tightened the screw, busted it off, all right? So now let's take a look at the meteroid. Now my ohm meter is set at 200 ohms because we're looking for ground. So if I touch it right there, my meter's working, right? Now let's go over here to the pad. I'm going to touch it right there. And look, you see it's grounded, right? So maybe it's not a problem. Now watch when I lift the board though, just a little bit. Open, closed, open, closed. So yes, we have an interruption of the ground pad. So now, the question of the day. How do you fix it? So what do you do when you have an issue like this? Well, there's a couple options. First off, you could probably tear the whole board out, spend a few hours getting your completely stripped down, and change that standoff. Or, maybe you could possibly drill it out and then take a tap and re-tap that hole and put in a new screw. Now, if we get in here a little closer, I do plan on trying that first. I'm going to drill out the shaft, I'm going to tap it, and then put in a new screw to hold the board down. But on top of that, I'm going to add a ground runner from this trace to the chassis. So it, even if this screw were to become loose over time, you'll still have a good ground. Worst case scenario, you could take a pair of pliers underneath here and snap that stand off right off slide a new one in and put a screw in from the top. Really wouldn't be a big deal. But I would rather try the easiest approach first. So let's drill it, tap it, mount it, and put a ground runner. All right, to start the process, number one, you need a good sharp drill. And this is about a 330 seconds drill. I'm going to use a little bit of cutting oil. So yeah, it's going to make a little bit of a mess. I might get some contaminants on the board, but I'll clean it up. All right, no big deal. So I'm going to put a little drop of oil on there. 
then we'll see if that screw will drill out. Kill it. I'll put a little more oil on it. It is drilling out the stud, so this is going to work. Grab a steady hand. Eventually, I should get through that screw. Got a pretty good sized hole, but I want that entire screw out of there. And keep going. All right, so success. I was able to drill out the old screw. I felt the drill go through. So now we're gonna run a tap in there and put in a new screw. So here's my tap kit. And for the task, we're going to go with an 832 tap. Hopefully my T-handle will clear it and be able to get in there. It's going to be a little bit of a task, but it's doable. Kill it. Kill it. So the tap is going to fit just fine. Same thing. We'll put a little bit of cutting oil on it. And tap away. So my long T-handle was hitting the chassis, but at least I was able to get the tap started because I needed the higher torque. Now I've got this little itty bitty guy who can finish the job. So the best thing to do is keep these guys straight, keep pressure on it, use plenty of cutting oil. When we get done, we'll be able to pop that 832 screw in there, put a ground runner. This should be pretty much as good as new. All right, so the hole is tapped. Now you can see it's full of contaminations, right? It's got chips in there, it's got oil in there. So I take a little bit of tuner wash. You better pull that camera back or you're gonna have a face full of this, right? And spray in some tuner wash to clean that out. That'll make sure we have a fairly decent electrical bond with that screw. But remember, I'm going to add a ground runner. So, I'll get the screw in, we're going to clean this mess up, put the ground on, and we'll test it. So I did contaminate my little camera lens with that tuner wash, but it came off luckily. So now, we have the new screw with a lock washer. It's an A32. We're going to get him installed. And that lock washer will help to secure that nice and secure. Then I'm going to clean this ground pad here and we're going to add a ground runner to the chassis. But first, let me clean up my mess. All right, to clean up my mess, I usually just set the amps on their side and everything will fall down here into the corner. Then we'll get a vacuum cleaner in there, clean that up. Always use an acid brush. These are cheap and disposable. Now there may be little flakes of metal left in this area of the preamp section, right? So that could be very bad. So let me show you a little trick. So if you're concerned that you have contamination on the board, some microscopic stuff that you can't see, get yourself some of this 100% isopropyl alcohol. I buy the GNC stuff. Get a rag under the board, wash it down. You're not going to hurt anything. Let the alcohol do the trick, and look, it washed out contaminants. Alright, so we have the screw in there, board securely mounted, and what I'm going to do is add a little ground runner. I'm going to use this bare wire. We're going to get right on this pad where it's tinned, and it's going to go down here to the chassis, and I'll solder that direct. Now here's the problem. You can't solder to this metal the way it is. It's got some kind of a goofy coating on there. Solder will not stick to it. So I'm going to take a Dremel tool, I'm going to rough up a small area, then we'll take the old Snozoramus Unger with a cracked element that still works after about uh, 50 years, and we'll solder that lead on. So here's our little roughed up area, and what I'm going to do is pre-tin it with the Unger.
So now I've got a nice tin blob, which is guaranteed to make good connection with that lead. this lead to be on the edge so it doesn't interfere with that screw. I'm bending down right down there. Go back to the unger. Get a little more solder in there. Slipped a little bit. I'm grab my long nose. I mean, it's got a good connection, but I'd rather have it centered up if I can. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. So there it is. We've got a secure ground now. So even if that screw comes loose, the hum and noise problem should not be able to come back. Now it's time to test it out. All right, the plot thickens. Um, I was ready to test the amp. Then I got the bright idea take the magnifying glass and look for maybe contamination before I fired it up. I did find a little bit, cleaned it up. You didn't get to see that. But I spotted some other stuff. So if you look down here, you see R2 and R1. Take a look at that solder connection right there. And this guy doesn't look like he's got much solder at all, but he's secure. But here's the real violator. Go over here to this board. See that resistor right there? Look at, look at that connection. There's no solder, and I can actually move that lead around in the hole. So, I'm going to have to solder this up first. That may have been a prime contributor to the problem of the amp. About me, okay. Let me get this connector out of my way, because I really don't want to melt it down during this. All right, get down in there. Tough one to get to. May have to pull the board out. Come on. Got it. All right. I need to get to these other two. Oh, look at there. Old C90. His lead's kind of open too. There's not much solder there. Now this would have been from the factory because nobody's been in here taking the solder out. So I'm guessing. The solder is never put on there to begin with. And kill it. Cracked it all. Looks right. good. So I'm gonna bring him up. Maybe I should plug it in first. Batteries are probably low. All right, so here we are. This is uh, the normal channel. Before, I couldn't get any gain out of it. Now we've got gain. Not too impressed with the looks of the sine wave. All right, now let's check a look at the gain channel. There's the gain channel. Of course, that's gonna have a lot more output. Okay. But the normal channel is now working. So the next thing to investigate so why is this sig signal here look so crappy? Look at that. It's terrible. I'm thinking one of the output tubes is either weak or almost dead. So a little more investigating to do. So guess what? We got a bad 12AX7 and it just happens to be the inverter tube. Look at there, 25% emissions on that side, 16% on that side. This thing is dead in a doornail. Let's change it out. All right, we changed out the bad inverter tube. Now, let's take a look at the channels again. I'm on channel A, the normal channel. Go over here to the scope. You can see the sine wave looks a little bit better. There is a little bit of distortion on the upper half of the sine wave. 
go over here to the gain channel. Same deal on the gain channel. That could be a lot of things. I'll have to go in there and investigate that a little bit further. The other thing I notice is that if you look at this board, there's been a lot of capacitors changed. So I need to take a look at those connections and make sure all that was done correctly. But all in all, it appears as though the Marshall is operational. Okay. So as you can see, the input channels on the amp are working now. The normal channel and the gain channel both have adequate gain for this amp to run. However, I did show you that distortion in the sine wave. It didn't quite look right, right? So then I got looking at the scope and I'm just looking at the output to the speaker. There is a slight amount of buzz in the speaker when you're playing the amp and look, there it is. So I thought, you know, that kind of has the same pattern as the top of that sine wave did. All right, so maybe it's these output tubes. When I was testing the output tubes, one of them showed gas and the other one didn't. So one of these tubes could be hurt. So let's do the old tap test, right? So here's one on the right. Tap on that, look at the scope, nothing. How about this one? Look at the scope. So there's obviously a loose element in that tube and that's the cause of the distortion when he's trying to play clean mode. So it needs a new set of tubes. All right, so the Marshall's not perfect yet, but the hum issue and the loss of gain on the normal channel is repaired. So it was probably that bad ground and those other components that I saw that had lousy solder connections. I still have some work to do, but the purpose of this video was to show you that sometimes the most obvious approach will get you where you need to be. Hope you enjoyed the video.